Good day, everybody. How's it going? Dishnet34 here welcoming you to today's episode of This Week in Perfect Team, episode number 203. Oh, man, what a week. What a week it has been, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, man, hopefully y'all have having a great week so far. Hopefully, um... Everything's been going all right in y'all's lives and all that good stuff. We have some fun stuff coming for you today because we are continuing our Build a Lineup program today. Ooh, buddy. Ooh, buddy. Fun times, fun times all around today. Oh, man. Move my camera over there a little bit. There we go. So... Why not waste any time? Why why would we want to waste time with a with as hype a set as we got here today? So why why, why not? Let's let's just get started right now with uh, some with one piece of news and notes and that is if you have not if you have not heard Out of the Park 24 is on sale right now. As part of the Steam Sports Fest sale, that's right, you can save 25% right now on Out of the Park Baseball 24 for one week only. For one week only. So if you have not gotten this game yet, go out and get it right now because this, this offer only going to last for another week or for, uh, for another few days or so. So that that's that's some awesome stuff right there. That's an awesome sale right there. There you go. 25% off for out of the park 24 as part of the Steam Sports Fest sale. Alrighty, alrighty. Yeah, buy it for your dad, buy it for your mom, buy it for your relatives, buy it for your cousins, buy it for your significant other. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll they maybe they'll enjoy the game. Who knows? Who knows? All right. And once again, I have to inform you all of one of the best deals on statistics for baseball that is out there right now. And that is you can save $25 on a stat head subscription powered by baseball reference. If you use code 23OOTP25, you can save $25 off an annual baseball or all sports subscription. Offer expires July 1st, 2023. And heck, you know, if you already have it, you can you could probably buy another one for, for your mom, for your dad, for your significant other. Buy it for the Gipper. Who knows? Who knows? But either way, it's a fantastic program. Baseball Reference has stat head baseball. And, and you know what? It's not just for baseball. It is not just for baseball. It's for baseball. It's for hockey. It's for basketball. It's even for American football because apparently I've gotten some comments that people think it's for soccer, aka football. It's not for that football. All right. Let's let, let's just get that out of the way. So there you go. Stat at baseball. If you use code 23OTP25, you can save $25 off an annual baseball or all sport subscription. Alrighty, alrighty. So now that we got those out of the way, let's get to the meat of the matter. Build a lineup continued. That's right. The diamond build a lineup cards are here the diamond build lineup cards are here and we're going to be kind of bouncing around a little bit we're going to go by overall this time because i know we've gone by you know straight positions and all that and in the past but you know we're going to go by overall here today so let's go ahead and get started and we're we're starting off really quickly here today starting off just really quickly here today and we're going to start off at the shortstop position where we bring to you 90 overall shortstop from the 1897 New York Giants. It is George Davis. 
George Davis, 79. Babip, 66. Power, 65. Avoid K, 85. Contact, 80. Gap power, 65 on the eye. Solid against lefties. Pretty good against righties as well. Uh, 81 Babip against lefties. 64 power, 67. Avoid K, 86. Contact, 75. Gap, and 61 on the eye. Pretty, pretty good against lefties. Serviceable against righties as well. Only a couple point gap in between some of the abilities here. 79 Babip, 66 power, 64 avoid K, 84 contact, 81 gap in 66 on the eye. Now defensively, he can play both shortstop and third base. And actually, given his defensive stats, he is rated a little bit higher over at third base. Uh, 81 range, 82 error, 80 arm, and 81 on the turn double play. He's a speedy guy too. 89 speed, 96 dealing, 95 on the base running, 71 sack bunt, 79 on the bunt for hit. George Davis. No, you know, this was probably one of his, this is his, probably his best offensive season of his career in the 1897 season. Hit 353 with a 410 on base, 509 slugging, 10 homers, 135 RBI. Holy moly. That, that's a lot of that's a lot of runs batted in right there. Plus, he had 65 stolen bases to go along with that. So some insane totals for George Davis during the uh, 1897 season. And actually, this was his first year as a full-time shortstop. So that's why he still has a little bit of third base eligibility along with him. Uh, he led the National League in RBI that year. And this was his final season with 100 or more RBI. Like far and away, this is a career high for him in that category. Had a career high in offensive wins above replacement, according to base our friends over at baseball reference, he had six offensive war of that year, which is far and away his best. I mean, probably by about 0.4 points from his 1893 season. So that's not bad at all. Plus he had one, he had, I believe 1.6 defensive war to go along with that, which is in the uh, top, uh, top 10 of his career. Pretty good. He also led the league in putouts in double plays at his first year at shortstop as well. So pretty good defender as well. Got to the balls he was able to get to. So that's pretty solid. Pretty solid stuff right there. George Davis from the 1897 New York Giants in perfect team, 24. Yeah, and there's a, yeah, there's a lot of green on that card. That That's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, next up. Let's go over to our right fielder of the build a lineup set. And we go to the 1980 Los Angeles Dodgers, where we find 91 overall Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith, 83 Babip, 77 power, 48 avoid K, 85 contact, 65 gap, and 71 on the eye. Now, these are some funky splits right here for Reggie Smith. Let's, let's talk about the V-left splits right here first. 90 Babbitt, 52 power, 66 avoid K, 88 contact, 62 gap, and 73 on the eye. So more of a contact hitter against lefty pitchers than he is against righty hitters, where there's like a completely different profile on him here. 81 Babbitt, 85 power, 42 avoid K. So he's going to strike out a lot more against righties than he is against lefties. 82 contact overall, 66 gap power, and 70 on the eye. Now, this is probably one of the best defensive Reggie Smiths that we have had in this set so far. 77 range, 112 error, and 97 on the outfield arm. Reggie Smith, definitely known for his throwing arm. Definitely known for his throwing arm. And we got a good one on this card for him here. 57 speed, 52 stealing, and 46 on the base running as well. He can play right field. He can play center field. And he is qualified to, to train up over at first base as well. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to potentially play this card in league. 
1980 season for Reggie Smith. Probably one of his, uh, definitely one of his better ones of his career. Let me grab his baseball reference page here real quick. And this was kind of, kind of toward the end of Reggie Smith's career. Back when he was more of a, more of a part-time player, more of a platoon guy than he was a, a full-time guy like he was in his years in Boston. And this was a renaissance year for Reggie Smith at the age of 35. He hit 322, 392, 508 with 15 homers, 55 RBI, and even 100 hits on the year. He was a 1980 All-Star that year, even though he only played three, like only three games past the month of July. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Past the month of July, he only got one plate appearance, three games. That's it. He was done by the end of, by the, uh, or by early August. And I still haven't been able to figure out why. I don't know if it was like injuries or just poor play, but I mean, he was hitting very well up until that point. Might have, might have been injuries. Might have been injuries. That's just my guess. Injured. Okay. That's what I figured. Because Wikipedia was a little bit vague on that, to be quite honest with you. But either way, it was a solid year, all-star year, third best defensive wins above replacement in his career at a point eight. So that's not bad either. Um, his best defensive season was back in 1970 when he had a 2.2 defensive war. And then you have to go back to 1967 Boston to have 0.9 war. So... That's something there. And then that's where you find his 1980 with the Dodgers. He had a 151 OPS in just 362 play appearances in 92 games, which that is absolutely insane. He had a couple of 160 OPS seasons as well in 1977 and 1978 for the Dodgers. So 151 kind of pales in comparison a little bit, but still not a bad year for Reggie Smith. Should be a decent defender for a lot of teams. Maybe a bench bat, maybe a little bit. Defensive replacement, potentially. That's just that's just my initial thoughts on, uh, on what it looks like here. So there you go. Reggie Smith from the 1980 Los Angeles Dodgers is in. Perfect team. 24. And yep, 1980, however, saw a great pickup in his offensive production. 322, 392, 508 line. Created an OPS to plus of 151, which would have been second in the league if he had made enough play appearances. Yep. Okay, yep. Injuries, so he only played 92 games. And in 1981, the next year, he only got 44 at-bats in a pinch-hitting and part-time role. Wow. That is insane. I mean, he was getting up there in age, so I, I really don't really don't blame him. All right, let's move on to our next card, and we go to the San Francisco Giants for our next build a lineup diamond card, and we're gonna go to our lefty reliever from 1983. It is Gary Lavelle. Gary Lavelle, 96 stuff, 97 movement, 95 homer, 69 pitcher babbip, and 81 on the control. But whoo boy, you want to talk about a lefty specialist right here. We have to talk about Gary Lavelle's V left here. 114 stuff, 128 movement, 116 homer rating, a solid 80 pitcher Babbitt and 92 on the control. This guy is a lefty killer extraordinaire. 90 stuff, 84 movement, 87 homer, 65 pitcher Babbitt, 78 control against righties. So not exactly someone you want to face righties. And that's kind of been a trend with this guy over the last couple of cards that we have seen from him. Uh, let's see, A991 on the velocity, extreme ground ball type, so put a good defense behind this guy. He could be solid for y'all. Fastball and slider combo as well, 39 stamina and 80 on the hold runner, so this guy can kind of go pretty long for some people. 
And if I was having some fun with a perfect draft sometime, you know, maybe I consider maybe putting them in the start rotation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 1983 season for Gary Lavelle. Pretty good one for him. 56 games, 87 innings pitched, 2.59 ERA, 20 saves, and 7 strikeouts per 9. He was an all-star in the 1983 season with the lowest whip of his career, a 1.057, which that is far and away his best season. Like the next highest, the next lowest whip would be a 1.204 the previous year in 1982. So this guy's solid, solid reliever out of the bullpen for the Giants in the 1983 season. One of only two of his all-star game appearances. 598 OPS and a 277 BABIP against among all batters during that during this season third lowest of his career for each of those categories and just because you know he's pretty darn splitty here let's take a let, let's take a gander at his v left versus his lefties versus righties um splits here so against righties it was a 625 ops 227 279 347 batting line Gave up all four of the homers he gave up that year against righties. And that was in 250 plate appearances. Against lefties, 237, 250, 280 on the slash line. That, that translates to a 530 OPS. Uh, no homers. 27 strikeouts to two walks in 99 plate appearances. That is a 13.5 strikeout to walk rate that's pretty darn good now against lefties you know kind of a small sample size here but his bad was kind of around 328 or so so probably a little bit of small sample size given it was only 99 play appearances but pretty good stuff for gary lavelle only giving up a uh, 78 um total ops plus or at least ops for split relative to players total OPS. So, not bad. Not bad. Alrighty, next up, we got Gary Lavelle here in Perfect Team 24. Alright, next up, let's stay on the mound. Let's stay on the mound and we go to our righty reliever. Ladies and gentlemen, from the 93 overall from the 2013 Los Angeles Dodgers, we have Kenley Jansen. Kenley Jansen, 113 stuff, 90 movement, 86 homer, 75 pitcher BABIP, and 73 on the control. A lot better against righties than he is against lefties with this setup here. 118 stuff, 93 movement, 89 homer rating, 78 pitcher BABIP, and 75 control. Slider and cutter combo, 93-95 on the velocity, is a fly ball guy as well. So something to keep in mind here. But this is probably one of the better homer ratings that we have seen on a Kenley Jansen card so far in this program. 75 games for Kenley Jansen in the 2013 season. 76 and two-thirds innings pitched. A 188 ERA, 28 saves, 13 strikeouts per nine. Um, the walk rate, though, for Kenley Jansen that year was right around, right around a 2.1. So a little bit low-ish, kind of like right in the, kind of like on the low-ish end of his career career stats so kind of interesting there 2.6 wins above replacement for kenley jansen during the 2013 season for the dodgers the third highest in his career had a career high in strikeouts with 111 of them in 76 and two-thirds innings pitched 177 batting average against and a 273 pitcher babip against so pretty good stuff right there for Kenley Jansen 56 on the hold runners 19 on the stamina so 
he can kind of hold runners a little bit. It's not an ideal rating, but it's not bad. 19 on the stamina, so kind of right around where relievers usually are here. Released of the modern era. Um, against lefties, 107 stuff, 85 movement, 82 homer, 73 pitcher babbitt, and 69 on the control. So there you go. Kenley Jansen from the 2013 Los Angeles Dodgers is in. Perfect team, 24. All right, next up. Next up, let's go behind the plate for our next build a lineup card. 94 overall from the 1977 St. Louis Cardinals. We have Ted Simmons. Ted Simmons, 66 Babip, 73 power, 91 avoid K, 86 contact, 72 gap, and 79 on the eye. Kind of some funky splits here, V right and V left here. V right, he's got 67 Babip, 72 power, 94 avoid K, 88 overall contact, 78 gap power, and 71 on the eye. Now, versus lefties, a little bit of a different story here. 61 BABIP, 77 power, 82 avoid K, 81 contact overall, 53 on the gap power, but that eye up there, 104 on the eye. It's not terrible. Not terrible at all. Defensively, 71 catcher ability, 65 on the catcher arm. He can play catcher. He is also qualified. Also qualified to learn first base. 1977 season for Ted Simmons. 318, 408, 500 on the slash line. 21 homers, 95 RBI, and a 144 OPS+. plus. He was an all-star that year and finished ninth in the National League MVP. Had a career high in walks that year with 79 of them. This is his only season with a 400 or more on base percentage. Now, defensively, this was tied for second for his highest defensive wins above replacement in your in his career uh, with a solid 1.0 there and the third highest offensive war season of his career with a 5.1. So not bad at all. Uh, speed stealing and base running for Ted Simmons do not have this guy steal. 16 speed, 8 stealing, but he is a decent base runner at a 63. Uh, but don't have this guy bunt either. Uh, five sack bunt, six on the bunt for hit. So, uh, nah, nah. Just, just don't, don't, don't have this guy bunt. It's that simple. He can't bunt. He's slow. He's gonna get, he's gonna get thrown out at first. Like, geez, oh, Pete. So there you go. Ted Simmons, 94 overall from the 1977 St. Louis Cardinals is in. Perfect team, 24. Alrighty, next up, let's go back to the mound. We have, let's see, we had one, we've had two. This is going to be our third pitcher of the set. And we go to our right-handed starter of the build a lineup set, ladies and gentlemen. 94 overall from the 1953 Philadelphia Phillies. It is Robin Roberts. 75 stuff, 66 movement, 61 homer rating, 83 pitcher BABIP, and 97 on the control. Now, kind of even-ish splits here in a few categories. 76 stuff against righties, 75 against lefties. 68 movement, 64 against lefties. Oh, well, 68 against righties, 64 against lefties. A little bit more homer rating against righties than he is against lefties. 64 to 56. Couple more points in pitcher bab up against righties than he is against lefties. And then for control, 97 against righties and 96 against lefties. Now, 116 stamina, that's quite a lot. 80 on the hold runners, fastball, curveball, sinker combo on this guy. He can also sack bunt a little bit. He's got 80 on the sack bunt. Robin Roberts, you know, another solid statistical season for Robin Roberts. 23 and 16 record, a 275 ERA, 5.1 strikeouts per nine, 1.6 walks per nine as well. He was a 1953 All Star, sixth 
in NL MVP, led the league in innings pitched, game started, complete games, and walks per nine. Career high in wins above replacement for Robin Roberts with a 9.8. Never really a big strikeout guy, 5.1 strikeouts per nine. Kind of, I think kind of relative to the era, it wasn't a bad strikeout rate, to be quite honest with you. But the walk rate, you know, he he was he had a lot of control around this time period in the uh, mid in the early to mid fifties here. Uh, this was, I believe, the let's see, second of a run of four of five seasons where he led the league in walk rate at a one point six, a one point one eleven WHIP. And that's not bad as well. Looking at the stats here, career high in wins above replacement with a nine point eight. Uh, I believe his 1954 season was a 9, 52 was an 8.4, 51 was an 8. So he had quite a tr he had quite a run in the mid in the early to mid 50s right here. So there you go, Robin Roberts from the 1953 Philadelphia Phillies is in perfect team 24. All right, next up, let's go to the second baseman of our build a lineup set and we bring to you from the 2009 Tampa Bay Rays 95 overall Ben Zobrist Ben Zobrist 68 Babip 75 power 66 avoid K 80 contact 70 gap and 98 on the eye a little bit better against lefties than he is against righties here in this one. 72 BABIP, 77 power, 66 avoid K, 84 contact, 85 gap, and 111 on the eye. Very big eye number right there. Against righties, it's a little meh. 67 BABIP, 75 power, 66 avoid K, 79 contact, 65 gap, and 94 on the eye. Defensively, though... He can play uh, quite a few positions. He can play second, he can play short, he can play right, and he can play left. Defensively, 85 range, 77 error, 70 arm, and 71 turn double play on the infield. And in the outfield, we've got 83 range, 102 error, and 85 on the arm. So you kind of got some interesting decisions here. Probably more of a second base kind of profile defensively on the infield. I'd probably, I'd probably have a bit of a debate whether or not to stick him in left or right if I get this card. So kind of an interesting, interesting dynamic here defensively. Uh, 61 speed, 75 stealing, 79 on the base running. Sack bunt and bunt for hit are a little on the, uh, on the average side. 59 sack bunt, 52 on the bunt for hit. Uh, 2009 season for Ben Zobris, 297, 405, 543 with 27 homers, 91 RBI, and a 149 OPS+. 2009 All-Star for Ben Zobris right here, 8th in AL MVP that year. And this, was his, and this was Ben Zobris' first full year in Major League Baseball, and he really showed out kind of as a, the big super utility guy on the Rays. Had career highs in homers, RBI, OPS plus, and wins above replacement with 8.6 in that category. So not a bad year for Ben Zobris. I kind of want to see what his walk to strikeout rate against lefties was because that is a high, high eye number right there. Let me take a quick gander at that. Because I know he had a few cups of coffee in 06 to 08, but this was his first real full year in the bigs. Let's see. Versus lefties, he had 34 walks to 35 strikeouts in 201 plate appearances. That's pretty darn good. Uh, compared that to a 57 walk to 69 strikeout rate against righty. So, not bad right there. Not bad. Ben Zobrist from the 2009 Tampa Bay Rays is in. Perfect team, 24. Alrighty, next up... Let's go back to the mound, and we have our lefty starter, our final pitcher of the set here, from the 1971 Detroit Tigers, we have 95 overall, Mickey Lolich. 91 stuff, 72 movement, 
69 homer rating, 76 pitcher Babbitt, and 88 on the control. A lot better against lefties than he is against righties. 96 stuff, 83 movement, 86 homer rating, 80 pitcher Babbitt, and 90 control against lefties. Versus righties, it's a little bit lesser here. 90 stuff, 68 movement, 63 homer, 74 pitcher Babbitt, 87 on the control. 117 on the stamina, 63 on the hold runners, 90 to 92 on the velocity. Fastball, curveball, changeup, sinker, knuckle, curve combo right here. Mickey Lolich, 1971 season, statistically very good. 25 and 14 with a 292 ERA, 7.4 strikeouts per nine, 2.2 walks per nine. He was a 1971 All Star, second in AL Cy Young voting, fifth in AL MVP voting. Very interesting, very interesting. Led MLB in wins, innings pitched, and strikeouts during that year with 308 of them. That's not bad, especially given the early 1970s being not quite a big strikeout-heavy era for, for pitchers that time. And that 308 strikeouts is a Tigers team record. Pretty good stuff there for Mickey Lolich. Few good pitches, few decent pitches, fastball, curveball, sinker. We'll see what happens with this guy. 95 overall, Mickey Lolich is in. Perfect team, 24. All right, let's get some power bats going. Let's get some power bats going, and we go over to first base, and we go to the 1982 Baltimore Orioles where we find 96 overall, Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray from the Baltimore Orioles, 79 BABIP, 93 power, 60 avoid K, 94 contact, 74 gap power, and 75 on the eye. But look at that V left right there for Eddie Murray. 95 BABIP, 96 power, 74 avoid K, 112 contact, 79 gap power, and 58 on the eye. That is... Not a bad V left split right there, if you ask me. Uh, v right, it's a little bit interesting. 74 BABIP, 92 power, 55 avoid K, 88 contact, 72 gap, and 81 on the eye. So, going to get a little more eye against righties here than you are against lefties, but you're going to have a lot more, I guess, production against lefties here. Um, defensively, 59 range, 70 error, 53 arm, and 35 on the turn double play. 24 speed, 73 stealing, 49 on the base running. 1982 season for Eddie Murray was a pretty good year for him. 316, 391, 549 on the slash line. 32 homers that year, 110 RBI and a 940 OPS+. Plus. He was an all-star that year, finished second in American League MVP, and he won a gold glove. I believe that was his only gold glove in his career. Let me double check that. Do, 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 do. Yep, the only gold glove of his career, that 1982 season, his one, two, three, four, five, sixth season in the big leagues. Not bad, not bad. He also led the American League in intentional walks that year, with 18, 321 BABIP was the second highest in his career. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all for Eddie Murray. 96 overall from the Orioles. He is in. Perfect team, 24. All right, next up, let's go out to left field. And we go to a guy that we have seen some splitty cards for so far. Ladies and gentlemen, 97 overall from the 2001 Houston Astros, Lance Berkman. 94 BABIP, 85 power, 49 avoid K, 98 contact, 102 gap power, and 100 on the eye. But man, oh man, look at those V right splits up there. 95 BABIP. 94 power, 48 avoid K, 101 contact, 
103 gap power and 102 on the eye. And you can make a case that this is the first Lance Berkman that can that could possibly play decently against lefties. 91 BABIP, 56 power, 52 avoid case. So you're going to have a little bit of low numbers in those categories, but you're going to get 86 contact overall, 101 gap power, 96 on the eye. So this is a solid card. You can make the case to play in both ways. Still more of a righty hitter. Still more of a hitter against righties. But you can make a case to play him against lefties with this card right here. Um, you can play left field, center field, and right field. He is qualified to learn at first base. He has a 63 outfield range, 58 outfield error, and 60 on the outfield arm. Kind of questionable as to whether you really want to have him over at first base because he only has two range, eight error, three infield, and one on the turn double play. That's that's 14 combined right there. That's a low number. That is a low number. 51 speed, 55 stealing, and 53 on the base running. Five sack bunt and two on the bunt for hit. Now, 2001 Lance Berkman Far and away, his best season of his career. 331, 430, 620 with 34 homers, 126 RBI. He was an all-star that year, finished fifth in NL MVP, led Major League Baseball in doubles. He had 55 of those suckers this year. Holy moly, that, that's pretty darn good. Had a 1099 OPS V righties with 32 homers. Compared that to an 867 OPS V lefties, with two homers. I'm kind of curious now as to what his uh, BABIP against lefties was. Let me take a quick little gander right here at those 2001 splits. V left, his BABIP was a 357 in 140 play appearances. So pretty solid, actually. Pretty solid. So there you go. Lance Berkman, 97 overall from the 2001 Houston Astros, is in. Perfect team, 23. All right, next up. Next up, let's go to the hot corner. Got two more for you in the diamond. Build a lineup set tonight or today, whenever you're watching this. Ladies and gentlemen, 98 overall from the 2008 Atlanta Braves, it is Chipper Jones. 95 Babip, 72 power, 81 avoid K, 106 on the contact, 60 on the gap power, 100 on the eye. But man, oh man, as with a lot of these Chipper cards that we have seen, those V left splits are something else. 111 Babip, 67 power, 92 avoid K, 122 contact overall, 65 gap, and 91 on the eye. Now against righties, it's not bad either. 90 Babip, 74 power, 77 avoid K, so you're getting a little more power from the right side against the against righties here. 77 avoid K, 101 contact, 59 gap, and 103 on the eye. So he's going to get on base probably a little more against righties here. Uh, Chipper Jones on the infield, 69 range, 62 error, 69 arm, and 68 on the turn double play. However, he is qualified to learn left field with this card. Doesn't have it in his stock, but, but, he can, uh, he has about 44 range, 65 error, 59 on the arm. 31 speed, 66 stealing, 45 base running for Chipper Jones. Now, his 2008 season, his 2008 season, now, cut short, which was unfortunate because, oh my goodness, those those were starting to look like video game numbers in that slash line up there for Chipper Jones. 2008, he hit 364, 470, 574 with 22 dingers, 75 RBI, and it honestly could have been a whole lot more. He was an all-star that year, won the MLB batting title, not just the NL batting title, 
he he led all of MLB in batting average. Highest defensive war season of his career, though, at a 1.2. So one of the more positive of his uh, of his career there. Um, and actually, it was the only season he had above a 1 in defensive wins above replacement. So this was a solid all-around year for Chipper Jones. Unfortunately, cut short. But man, oh man, th those are some video game numbers. At the age of 36, mind you. At the age of 36, he was putting up those numbers. Man, oh man, this guy, this guy, freaking legend right here. Chipper Jones, 98 overall from the Braves. Is it? Perfect team, 24. All right, our final build a lineup diamond for you today. We go out to center field and we bring to you 99 overall. Carlos Beltran from the 2006 New York Mets. 56 BABIP, 102 power, 62 avoid K, 80 contact, 76 gap, and 102 on the eye. Some interesting splits. 59 BABIP, 106 power, 57 avoid K, 83 contact, 73 gap, and 105 on the eye against righties. And against lefties, 44 BABIP, 89 power, 75 avoid K, 68 contact, 87 gap power, 95 on the eye. 275, 388, 594 on a slash line during that 2006 season. 41 homers, so kind of kind of feeling maybe that's why you have, you know, high power but a bit of a low BABIP there. Probably due to the lower batting average, higher amount of homers. That's kind of what I'm thinking with that right here. Uh, he can play center field. However, he is eligible to be trained in right field. However, he doesn't have any stock defense out in right field, but pretty decent defensively out there in center field. 85 range, 98 error, 101 on the outfield arm. Not terrible, but that's pretty decent. Uh, 61 speed, 85 stealing, 62 on the base running. Fly ball guy, spray hitter tendencies, all that good stuff. Carlos Beltran, career highs in Homer, RBI, and walks and wins above replacement during the 2006 season. And in the 2006 NLCS, hit three homers, four RBI. However, Mets fans believe those numbers should be a little bit higher. That's just me, though. And maybe a lot of Mets fans. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe if he had 63 of OK. Maybe, just maybe, maybe he would have swung at that curveball. I don't know. I don't know. So there you go. Carlos Beltran, 99 overall from the 2006 New York Mets is your final diamond build a lineup of the set. So some interesting cards here tonight, folks. Robin Roberts, Mickey Lolich, Carlos Beltran, Reggie Smith, Kenley Jansen, George Davis, Ben Zobris, Ted Simmons, Gary Lavelle, Eddie Murray, Lance Berkman, and chipper jones here tonight very interesting stuff there very interesting stuff so you know it, it, we've gone a little bit short here today you know what you know and you know maybe maybe i need to fill out a little bit more time here today on the stream you know have you get your drops and all that and all that good stuff so you know what Guess what, folks? But wait. There's more. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we have the perfect build a lineups here tonight. That's right. We are releasing both the diamond and the perfect build a lineups here tonight. Oh, baby. Whoa, baby. And my apologies go out to EVC. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. So guess what? We got, we got more for y'all here tonight. We got more for y'all here tonight. And we're going to start back on the mound with our build a lineup perfect cards. And we bring to you 100 overall. Robin Roberts, 
84 stuff, 85 movement, 77 homer, 91 pitcher Babbitt, 115 on the control. And we had some pretty even splits for Robin Roberts right here. 85 stuff against righties, 84 stuff against lefties. 85 movement to 84 against lefties. 77 homer against both sides, 92 pitcher bat up against righties, 91 against lefties, and a 115 control against righties, and a 114 against lefties. 119 stamina, 99 on the hold runners, fastball, curveball, sinker combo on this guy. Now, Robin Roberts. Mm. Very interesting pitcher um, from the 40s all the way up to the 60s. 286 and 245 career record. A 3-4-1 ERA, 4.5 strikeouts per 9, 1.7 walks per 9. He was a 7-time All-Star. Led MLB in wins 4 times. Innings pitched 5 times. Walks per 9 4 times. And complete games 5 times during his illustrious career. Gave up the second most homers of all time though. And that's really the big thing that kind of draws back Robin Roberts. A little bit here H gave up 522 career home runs which is um a big number and apologies for the uh, frame drops there if you had those on your on your end but he was still good enough really great during the during the um during the early to mid 50s and i kind of want to highlight just how good he was so let's let's take a range here. Let's go from 1950 to 1955. During that time period, he went 138 and 78 with a 293 ERA, a 135 ERA plus, four and a half strikeouts per nine to 1.7 walks per nine, 2.71 strikeout to walk ratio, which isn't bad for that time frame. 964 strikeouts. In 1,937 and two-thirds innings pitched. That came with 161 complete games, 24 shutouts, and even threw in 14 saves during that time period. Just absolutely incredible for Robin Roberts. 1976 Hall of Fame inductee, Robin Roberts. So there you go. Robin Roberts, 100 overall peak card from the Philadelphia Phillies is in. Perfect team, 24. All righty, we stay on the mound. We're going we're gonna to start with the pitchers here tonight, folks, with the Build-A-Lineup perfect cards. And we go to the lefty starter here, and we bring to you 100 overall peak Mickey Lolich. 109 stuff, 83 movement, 76 homer rating, 87 pitcher batup, and 97 on the control. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties. 114 stuff against lefties, 86 movement, 82 homer, 92 pitcher batup, and 102 on the control. Against righties, 107 stuff, 81 movement, 75 homer, 86 pitcher batup, and 96 on the control. 109 stamina, 68. On the hold, runners, fastball, curveball, changeup, sinker, and knuckle curve combo right here. And Mickey Lolich, you know, one of those great left-handed pitchers that, you know, you kind of hear talked about as one of the better pitchers of all time. Maybe, maybe he, I'm trying to see here. Like Mickey Lolich, really good Detroit Tigers pitcher right here. 1963 to 79, 217 and 191 career record, a 344 ERA, seven strikeouts per nine, 2.7 walks per nine in his career, three time All Star with the Detroit Tigers, won the 1968 World Series, famous for three complete game wins during that 1968 World Series. And he has the fifth most strikeouts all time by a left handed pitcher with 2,000. 832 of them. So that's why you got, you know, a bit of a high stuff rating right there for this guy. So there you go. Mickey Lolich. This card, 
probably could play right about now. So there you go. Mickey Lolich from the Detroit Tigers is in. Perfect team, 24. All right. Let's keep with our southpaws right here. We go to the lefty reliever for our build a lineup set. 100 overall, peak Gary Lavelle. 109 stuff, 110 movement, 106 homer, 76 pitcher batter, and 85 on the control. But man, oh man, we've, we've talked about this guy's V left splits all throughout build a lineup. You do not want to be a lefty hitter against Gary Lavelle. If we have not made that clear already, these should be uh, warning enough for you to not put in a left-handed batter against Gary Lavelle. 128 stuff. 118 movement, 112 homer rating, 89 pitcher BABIP, 107 control. And against righties, that's kind of decent as well. 102 stuff, 107 movement, 105 homer rating, 72 pitcher BABIP, 77 on the control, 35 stamina, 59 on the hold runners. Fastball and slider combo right here. Gary Lavelle, you know, kind of an underrated reliever of the 1970s, early 80s or so. 745 career games, 136 career saves, a 293 ERA, and 6.4 strikeouts per nine. He was a two time All Star with the Giants, 320 save seasons as a reliever. So he closed out quite a few games for the Giants back in the 70s and the 80s. 566 OPS career against lefties, against them, 693 OPS against righties in his career so this guy solid against lefties kind of decent against righties right here now now some people now some people you know if they want to you could probably make them like a like a spot starter or something if you really want to however it might be a little tough with two pitches fastball and slider right here so Use them as a starter at your own risk. Because I see that being discussed a little bit in the chat. So there you go. Gary Lavelle, peak card from the Giants. Is it? Perfect team, 24. All right, we have our final reliever now. Ladies and gentlemen, peak card, right-handed reliever from the Los Angeles Dodgers. We have... Kenley Jansen, 123 stuff, 107 movement, 101 homer, 88 pitcher BABIP, 96 on the control. And look at these splits against righties, folks. Look, look up there. 126 stuff, 111 movement, 103 homer rating, 89 pitcher BABIP, and 97 on the control. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a closer right there. You know, honestly, I'm going to I'm going to say a hot take right here. I think Kenley Jansen's a Hall of Famer. I really believe Kenley Jansen is a Hall of Famer. Straight up. Like this guy absolute dominance from the closer position in his career and he's still going. He is still going. Kenley Jansen, slider, cutter combo, 17 stamina, 57 on the hold runners. 2010 through 2023 in his career, 780 games. 400 career saves, just reached that mark this year. 12.9 strikeouts per nine, 2.7 walks per nine. He was a three-time All-Star with the LA Dodgers. Four 40 save seasons, nine straight seasons of 80 or more strikeouts. That is an L.A. Dodgers record for relievers. So pretty good stuff right there for Kenley Jansen. This guy is going to be one heck of a closer. Now, extreme fly ball type, 94-96. So you might see some fly balls coming off the bats of people against Kenley Jansen, but 
Got some good defense behind him. Should be able to keep those in the park. So there you go. Kenley Jansen, peak card from the LA Dodgers. Is it? Perfect team, 24. All right, let's go to the outfield. Let's go to the outfield now, and we go to our 100 peak overall, Lance Berkman. Lance Berkman, 81 BABIP, 99 power, 69 avoid K, 101 contact, 96 gap power, 112 on the eye. Once again, very good against righties. 86 BABIP, 104 power, 67 avoid K, 105 contact, 100 gap power, and 116 on the eye. He can play first. He can play left. He can play center. He can play right. And he can actually play first base, unlike his diamond card. 70 range on the infield. 60 error. 63 arm and 58 on the turn double play. 62 range in the outfield. 59 error and 70 arm as well. And against lefties, you know, you can make a case that he can be kind of serviceable against lefties. 67 BABIP, 86 power, 74 avoid K, 86 contact, 86 gap, and 101 on the eye. Uh, first base rating at an 83, left field rating at a 75, center field rating at a 40, right field rating at a 67. In his career, Lance Berkman, 1999 to 2013, hit 293, 406, 537, 366 career homers. 1,234 RBI. He was a six-time All-Star, 2011 World Series champ with the St. Louis Cardinals. And he had six seasons with an OPS plus of 150 or more, which that is insane numbers right there. From 1999 to 2013 in his career, he had the 11th highest OPS among all qualified hitters with a 144 OPS plus, which is just absolute insanity. So there you go. Lance Berkman from the Houston Astros peak card in perfect team 24. All right, let's shift over to the right side here, or at least not to right field, but to the next position to the right of left field which is center field transitions. Ladies and gentlemen, 100 overall peak center fielder from the New York Mets, Carlos Beltran. 69 BABIP, 78 power, 73 avoid K, 84 contact, 92 gap, 97 on the eye. Some really solid defense for Carlos Beltran. 90 range, 101 error, 112 on the outfield arm, 92 speed, 117 stealing, 96 on the base running, fully trained in center and right field as well. Kind of some even-ish splits here in a few categories. Uh, 98 eye against righties, 92 against lefties. Um, even gap power between lefties and righties. A little more contact ability against lefties as well. 70 BABIP, 87 power, 70 avoid K. Do have a little more avoid K, against righties as well uh, with 74 uh, to go along with a 68 BABIP, 75 power, and 83 contact overall. Carlos Beltran's career from 1998 to 2017 between Kansas City, the Astros, the Mets, Cardinals, Yankees, and the uh, Astros again. 279, 350, 86 on his career slash line, 435 career homers, 1,587 RBI. He was a nine-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glover, two-time Silver Slugger, and the 1999 American League Rookie of the Year. Now, that was just his regular season performance? Take a gander at his postseason performance. 307, 412, 609. On his postseason slash line. Whew. 16 homers, 42 RBI in postseason play. 
That is some insane numbers right there for Carlos Beltran in a postseason. So is his belt, so is his clutch rating like a 200 or so? Depends on who you ask. I mean, you can ask Mets fans and you can, and they, they'll probably say, um, zero. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Carlos Beltran also was the first switch hitter in MLB history to have more than 300 homers and 300 stolen bases. So there you go. Carlos Beltran peak card from the New York Mets is in. Perfect team. 24. All right. Let's go to right field now. Let us go to right field. And we have for you from the Boston Red Sox peak card. 100 overall. Reggie Smith. Reggie Smith. 77 Babbitt. 98 power. 85 avoid K, 103 contact, 85 gap power, and 84 on the eye. Some very interesting splits, some very solid splits for Reggie Smith right here. Uh, against righties, 77 BABIP, 101 power, 85 avoid K, 104 contact, 85 gap power, and 85 on the eye. Against lefties, 76 BABIP, 88 power, 86 avoid K, 99 contact, 85 gap, and 78 on the eye. First base, center field, and right field eligible. Defensively, in the outfield, he's got 82 range, 63 error, and 82 on the outfield arm. Def on the infield, he's got 43 range, 36 error, 40 arm, and 38 on the turn double play. Speed ceiling and base running at a 72, 76, and 81, respectively. Sack bunt rating, eh. Yeah. Yeah. 287, 366, 489 on the slash line for Reggie Smith. 314 homers, 1,092 RBI. He was a seven-time All-Star with the Red Sox, Cardinals, and Dodgers. Ninth highest OPS among switch hitters of all time. Ninth highest OPS plus at a 137. And a little bit of a fun fact about Reggie Smith. You know, he played in Japan for a year or two after he left MLB. He also owns a pilot's license. Plays seven different instruments. Who would have known? We all, we all have our talents. You know, a lot of, lot of players have talents outside of baseball. That's pretty cool stuff right there. So there we go. 63, ra well, 63 rating over at first base. 74 rating in center field. 93 rating in right field. So... Definitely more of a right fielder when it comes to the defensive ratings here. So there you go. Peak Reggie Smith from the Boston Red Sox is in. Perfect team 24. All right, let's go to the infield. Let's go to the infield. And we start behind the plate. And we go to 100 overall peak catcher from the St. Louis Cardinals. It is Ted Simmons. 77 BABIP, 83 power, 97 avoid K, 101 contact, 93 gap, and 95 on the eye. And some very solid splits against both lefties and righties here. 77 BABIP against both lefties and righties. Against lefties, he's got 89 power. 88 avoid K, 100 contact, 86 gap power, and 94 on the eye. Against righties, 77 bab, 81 power, 99 avoid K, 101 contact, 95 gap, and 95 on the eye. Now, defensively, a little bit on the above average side when it comes to catcher ability and catcher arm, 74 catcher ability, 76 on the arm. 21 speed, 64 stealing, 42 on the base running. He can play catcher. He is fully trained over at first base as well. Now, Ted Simmons, pretty much known as one of the best hitting catchers of all time. Like, if you want to talk about catchers with bats, you know, obviously you got Pudge Rodriguez first. You got Johnny Bench. Ted Simmons right up there in terms of the best hitting catchers of all time. 
1968 to 88 in his career. He had 285, 348, 437 with 248 homers, 1,389 RBI. Yep, Mike Piazza as well. Yep, yep, yep. He was an eight-time All-Star with the Cardinals and the Brewers. Second most hits among all catchers all time with 2,472. A paltry 400 or so behind Pudge Rodriguez for first all time. He was also a 2020 Hall of Fame inductee. And if I recall correctly, his perfect card from after he got uh, into the Hall of Fame, I pulled him on stream once which that was hilariously fun. And also pretty epic at the same time. So I have a little history with Ted Simmons here. Ted Simmons, perfect card, peak card from the St. Louis Cardinals, is in perfect team 24. All right, next up, let's go to first base and we have for you... 100 overall, first baseman, Eddie Murray. 80 BABIP, 91 power, 79 of OEK, 101 contact, 80 gap power, 90 on the eye. A little bit better against righties than he is against lefties. 83 BABIP, 94 power, 78 of OEK, 104 contact, 80 gap power, and 92 on the eye. Solid defensively over at first base, 69 range, 70 error, 67 arm, and 65 on the turn double play. 35 speed, 70 stealing, and 56 on the base running, so not a guy you really want to have stealing on the base paths, but, but he won't kill you base running wise. It's kind of in the average spot there, but don't have this guy bunt, like, at all. Just don't. Eddie Murray, Nice little 21-year career he had. 287, 359, 476 with 504 career home runs, 1,917 RBI. He was an eight-time All-Star with the Orioles, three-time Gold Glover, three-time Silver Slugger. He was the 1977 Rookie of the Year and made it into the Hall of Fame in 2003. He is one of only seven players in MLB History with 3,000 or more hits and 5, 500 or more home runs. I was just about to say 5,000 would have been dead wrong. He is also the career leader in intentional walks with 128 of them. That's a lot of intentional walks. And I don't know if that was an indictment on the Baltimore Orioles lineups of the 70s and 80s, which were pretty decent. But like, Eddie Murray, still a force to be reckoned with during those times. I mean, 504 career home runs. That's nothing to shake a stick at right there. So there you go. Eddie Murray, 100 overall. Build a lineup. Peak. Perfect card. Is in. Perfect team. 24. All righty. All righty, all righty. Am I, am I right in intentional walks here? Because I looked at his baseball reference page. I looked at his baseball reference page. I go to an... Oh, you know what? I was wrong. I looked at the wrong column. My apologies. He's actually the career leader in sacrifice flies, not intentional walks. That's my apologies right there. I should have, I should have double checked my slides, should have double checked my slide beforehand. So he's actually the career leader in sacrifice flies with 128. So that's, that's my bad on that. I actually had 10 of them in 1996. That's something else. He actually did lead the American league three times in intentional walks though. Had 18 of them in 1982, 25 of them in 1984 and 21 of them with the Dodgers in 1990. Yeah, what I need is a subscription to Stat Hat Baseball. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Eddie Murray in perfect team, 24. All right, let's move over to second base and we bring to you 100 overall peak card, Ben Zobrist from the Tampa Bay Rays. 
72 Babip, 68 Power, 85 Avoid K, 86 Contact, 98 Gap Power, and 105 on the eye. A little bit better against lefties in some categories than he is against righties. 83 Babip, 65 Power, 81 Avoid K, 93 Contact, 107 Gap, and 100 on the eye. Super utility guy right here. He can play second. He can play short. He can play left. And he can play right field. Infield range of 82. Infield error of a 90. Infield arm of a 74. And an infield turn double play of a 76. In the outfield, he's got 81 range, 104 error, and 72 on the arm. So maybe a little bit better in left field than he is in right field here. Speed stealing and base running, he's got 66 speed, 87 stealing, and 76 on the base running. In his career from 2006 to 2019, and like I mentioned earlier, he had a couple cups of coffee between 06 and 08, which weren't really impressive. 266, 357, 426 on his career stat line. 167 homers, 768 RBI. He was a three-time All-Star with the Rays and the Cubs. Also had a season with the A's and the Royals, which he won the World Series with in 2015. He has a career walk-to-strikeout ratio of 832 walks to 994 strikeouts. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. Also a two-time World Series champion, 2015 and 2016, when he did it with the Cubs. So there you go. Ben Zobrist, pretty good utility guy right here. He is in. Perfect team, 24. All right, let's move over to shortstop now. Shortstop time, and we have for y'all 100 overall from the New York Giants. George Davis, 84 Babip, 62 Power, 78 Avoid K, 92 Contact, 99 Gap Power, and 90 on the eye. Versus lefties, 86 Babip, 60 Power, 76 Avoid K, 92 Contact, 95 Gap, and 87 on the eye. Against righties, 83 Babip, 63 Power, 79 Avoid K, 92 Contact, 101 Gap, and 91 on the eye. Defensively, he can play third, short, and center field. Very interesting there that he can play some center field. 88 range, 87 error, 85 arm, and 89 on the turn double play in the infield. In the outfield, he's got 81 range, 78 error, and 80 on the arm. 92 speed, 95 stealing, 95 base running as well. 82 sack bunt, and 88 on the bunt for hit. In George Davis's career from 1890 to 1909, hit 295, 362, 405, 73 career homers, and 1,440 RBI. He was a 1906 World Series champion with the Chicago White Sox. 24 career defensive wins above replacement. So this guy, solid defender in his career. That, that's, that's way up there. And was able to get into the Hall of Fame via one of the committees in 1998. Solid guy during his career. George Davis, 100 overall shortstop, is in. Perfect team, 24. Alrighty, and finally tonight, in terms of our build-a-lineup sets here, we go over to third base, and we bring to you 100 overall Peak third baseman from the Atlanta Braves, Chipper Jones. 88 Babip, 92 Power, 83 Avoid K, 109 Contact, 96 Gap Power, and 107 I. Look at these splits here, folks. These are solid. 92 Babip against lefties. 89 power, 78 avoid K, 109 contact, 93 gap, and 101 on the eye. And against righties, not bad either. 87 Babbitt, 93 power, 85 avoid K, 109 contact, 97 gap, and 109 on the eye. He can play third base. He can play a little bit of left field. 
68 range, 77 error, 79 arm, and 66 turnover play on the infield. And in the outfield, he's got 57 range, 69 error, and 70 on the arm. 59 speed, 86 stealing, and 73 on the base running as well. Chipper Jones, you know, we talked a lot about him throughout the build a lineup set. He has had a solid career in the big leagues. 1993 to 2012, so darn near 20 years. 303, 401, 529 career slash line. 468 homers, 1,623 RBI. He was an eight-time All-Star, two-time Silver Slugger, and the 1999 National League MVP, which we've already had a card for that season in this set. He is the only switch hitter in MLB history with a 300 average and 400 or more home runs in their career. That's outstanding right there. The only switch hitter in MLB history to have those stats. Crazy stuff. And he was a Hall of Fame inductee during the 2018 season. So, pretty good stuff right there. Chipper Jones from the Atlanta Braves. Peak card is it. Perfect team, 24. All right, folks. As always, with our build a lineup sets, we have a topper card. If you finish off all of the missions for Build a Lineup, you will be receiving this guy right here. The best switch hitter, in my opinion, of all time from the New York Yankees. It is center fielder, 100 overall, Mickey Mantle from the 1956 New York Yankees. 92 BABIP, 129 power, 67 avoid K, 117 contact, 70 gap power, 121 on the eye. Look at these splits right here. Oh my goodness. 108 bat up against lefties. 108 power, 68 avoid K, 124 contact, 63 gap, and a 111 on the eye. And against righties, it's pretty good as well. 86 bat 136 power, 66 avoid K, 115 contact, 72 gap, and 124 on the eye. And he is a solid, solid defender as well. He can play first. He can play left. He can play center. He can play right. Yes, he can play the corner outfield. And he is fully trained in the corner outfield. 84 range, 79 error, 82 arm in the outfield. And in the infield, he's got 46 range, 41 error, 46 arm, and 33 on the turn double play. And he's got a little bit of speed to him as well. 63 speed, 96 dealing in 100 on the base running. That is solid stuff right there. Mickey Mantle, you know, this isn't a peak card. But man, oh man, his career is something to behold. 1951 to 1968, he hit 298, 421, 557 with 536 homers, 1,509 RBI. He was a three-time AL MVP, 20-time All-Star, seven-time World Series champ with those New York Yankees. Led the AL in homers four times, had 10 seasons of 100 or more walks, and a 1,000 OPS eight times in his career. 1974 Hall of Fame inductee. If we want to, you know, shrink that down to just the 1956 season, this was an absolutely bonkers stat line here. His 1956 alone, 353, 464, 705 on the slash line, 52 homers, 130 RBI. That's an 1169 OPS, a 210 OPS plus, 
won his first MVP award that year, led the league in runs scored with 132, led the league in homers. He, he won the Triple Crown in the 1956 season. Holy moly, folks. And that extrapolates to an 11.2 wins above replacement. Heck, his 1957 was actually 0.1 war better than that. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff for Mickey Mantle, your topper reward for build a lineup. Pretty great stuff right here. So there you go. Your build a lineup perfect collection. Ted Simmons, Eddie Murray, Ben Zobers, Chipper Jones, George Davis, Lance Berkman, Carlos Beltran, Reggie Smith, Robin Roberts, Mickey Lulich, Gary Lavelle, Kenley Jansen, and Mickey Mantle as the topper. Oh, man, what a day. What a day, folks. My goodness. All right, before we sign off for the night, let's go ahead and congratulate our weekly leaderboard champions for week six from May 8th through the 14th, which is also PTCS2 period week number two. Daily Iron champion this past week was Jim Bowden, one in the strong batty attires with 67 points. Daily Bronze, the Madison Mashers in M the Bow, taking the top spot last week with 116 points. In the Daily Silver, it was Robert Cat and the Denver Highlanders in first place last week with 111 points. Daily Gold, Mr. Furious and the Toledo Mudhens in first place last week with 114 points. Daily Diamond, Jeff LTN and the Value City Viffers once again taking home the Daily Diamond. Mm, 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 mm. 163 points. He is on a six-week streak. Can anybody stop the Viffers? Can anybody stop the Viffers? Anybody? Come on. Daily Open, Red Eclipse, and the Palatine Plutos in first place with 105 points right there. Laertes. Actually, no, I believe Daily Wildcard was actually Jeff LTN. Hey, in the Value City Viffers. I don't know how Laertes snuck in there. 172 points for the Viffers in the Daily Wildcard last week. In the weekly tournaments, we have Bross 317 or B Ross 317 and the big perfect point package with 143 points. Perfect draft daily tournaments last week. Lucas GE and the Watch the Becky Beesball Wonderland with 106 points. And then the perfect draft weekly tournaments. Zen Lunatic and the Sacramento Skunks finishing in first place last week with 58 points points so congratulations to all of our weekly leaderboard champs from last week you want to see your name up there well enter in some daily and weekly tournaments and you could see your name on this list at the end of twift every single week that's pretty cool stuff right there all right folks well thank you so much for tuning in to episode number 203 of this week in perfect team our build a lineup continuation and conclusion to the build a lineup collection thank you so much for tuning in i will see you tomorrow night for an episode of the perfect team friday showdown have a great night everybody dishnet 34 rob tomlinson signing off have a great night everybody <laughs>